and good evening. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, and congrats again to Paddy and the whole team at Web Summit for, for pulling off another incredible few days for us here. It's been a fantastic event again. Um, I'm Callum Lyon, I'm delighted to be here. Um, I was, we were having a brief chat with these three amazing people a couple of minutes ago, and it's a real honor for me to be able to introduce them to you and to be able to have a conversation with them about the journey that they've been on. I, I'm twice their age, I think, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm the old person for sure. And, it's, um, and for me, my journey as a business person began at the age of 38. And you know why we've got things in common? We've also got a lot of differences because these guys have really started at such a young age. So I think what we'll do is we'll kick off and we'll let them introduce themselves to us. Sure, uh, I'm Rona Toher from Restored Hearing. We provide sound therapy for people who suffer from tinnitus and we also make a new type of hearing protection that works like an electronic headset, but for the same price as a foam headset. And my journey began at the age of 18, back at the Young Scientist. So I feel like I'm home in the RDS. Brilliant. And Connor? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Connor Nolan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wattspot. And uh, what we're trying to do is really change the whole world of charging. So uh, essentially, we provide businesses with uh, phone charging facilities to, as an incentive for our customers to come into their business as opposed to the competitors um, to increase sales and elevate the overall customer experience. So we've been going for just over a year now, and we expanded to the UK six months ago, so things are going pretty well. Great. Neve. Um, and I'm Neve McHugh. I'm the co-founder of Poker. Um, so what we're doing is we're building the world's biggest beauty salon, and we connect customers with vetted mobile beauty professionals. Um, and that's just over uh, 12 months we've been at that, so. Great, great. So the one thing that defines you and makes you very different is, and all as well, um, it, it Startups of the Week Award. So you've all been profiled as well in the press for the, the work that you've done at such a young age. But tell me about the, the, when that, you know, that moment that you, when you go to college, or you've been, I know you've an interesting story about college as well, and you're still at college, right? Yeah. So, so the, the, this dilemma that you're faced with, because you, you've, got, you've got the college, and then you've got the idea of potentially starting a business, and then you've got you know, potentially maybe pressure on you to go for maybe a more traditional career perhaps, right? So what's the feeling like, and how did you come to, to, to commit to this particular course? Uh, I guess it's terrifying, <laughs> uh, initially. So we incorporated our business just after the young scientist and my co-founder and I did the project together. And we knew that we wanted to take our product globally and that we had something that would change people's lives. And the only way for us to actually do that was to incorporate as a business. So we just said, OK, that's the way we're going to do this. We still went ahead and went to college. Um, Emer went on to do her degree, and she's now got a master's in physics. but. Our business was growing while we were in college, and I went on sabbatical, uh, an extra long sabbatical, a couple of years ago as it was growing. And that's definitely a really scary choice to make. Um, the life of an entrepreneur is a brave one, I think. And um, it, was, it was a big leap for us, but we knew that what we, were do what we were building was going to be huge, and we had to make that jump. And did you evaluate, though, like the you know, different paths, and did you kind of logically try and say to yourself, I could do this, this, or this, or was it just, no, this is a one-way street? I think as an entrepreneur, you're constantly evaluating like 100 different paths that you can do. I'm sure you all do it every single day. You could do something 100 different ways. But this now seems like the only way that we could have done this to... You were, you were committed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Connor, how did you feel? Yeah, for us, it was uh, kind of strange um, in the sense that it was just a really, really vague idea and we kind of saw the problem, knew we needed to fix it, and went about, like, how, how are we going to do it? So as two students, we didn't really have any money for kind of R&D, so we went straight, found a product that fitted the criteria, really, and um, invested our own money, a few hundred euro to get a few samples in, and uh, brought it to customers. So the way we did it was, as opposed to kind of testing it in kind of small uh, coffee shops and stuff, we went to the likes of Insomnia and Topaz, and let it filter down amongst the, the kind of small. But there was firms. no hesitation in your head that this was something that you wanted to do. No, uh, in that were... sense, it was. It was always. I never really thought it was going to fail. In right. the sense that we kind of all, everyone here, really. Good man. It's uh, yeah. Everyone kind of knows how bad phones are for batteries, so it's yeah. like a common. Like, and you just you were you were committed it. to this path. Yeah, yeah, so I kind of, from an accumulation of things, whether it was uh, working in retail and having people ask us to charge our phones every day, yeah. uh, or in college, actually having like a useless iPhone that was going off, dying at about 40%. So 
Um, we just said, like, let's, let's go for it. It's definitely not going to. If, and even if it does fail, uh, worst comes to worst, uh, potential employers might see that we gave it an extra go and there was, right. there was a bit extra in you, so fair play. And were you tempted by the lure of the steady job? Um, actually, out of college, I got an internship. I never really knew what I wanted to do. I studied English in college and I didn't really have a natural progression from there. It's kind of like, what do I do now? Um, so I got an internship actually in a beauty yeah. college. Um, and it was there that I actually met my co-founder, Louise, who's a makeup artist. With, she's been in the Great. industry for 10 years. Um, and, you know, while I was there, I had the experience of working for someone else. And yeah. I suppose yeah. that feeling of, you know, I'd be quite a hard worker. So I was working really, really mm -hmm. hard and not necessarily seeing, you know, the value of it myself, you know. Yeah. Um, so I've had that experience and really felt like, you know, I could put all this work into something and I could actually get the return on it. And I suppose myself and Louise, we met and had a bit of a light bulb moment. And since then, it's just made sense. And going to work and not having to look at the clock <laughs> is actually the most amazing feeling in the world. And I love it. I wouldn't change it. That sense of being yeah. in charge yourself. Yeah, it's amazing. It's that's amazing. What, that's what coming out is really valuable. Yeah. And tell me, like, when you're starting out in business, one of the things that I know I certainly was very slow at the start was to ask for help. I, it took me a long time to realize that you know, people like to help you, and sometimes it's actually good to be helped as well. So did you have people helping you along the way, or you know, people close to you that maybe were encouraging, or did you find support from people? What was the reaction of other people, maybe, and how did they help you? Um, I suppose when I was in college, I actually came, started my first business. Um, and I had an idea for DIY kits for Christmas jumpers. Um, so I sat my parents down and I said, listen, I've got this idea. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds insane. Um, but they've always been so encouraging. And my mom actually helped me out and helped with packaging the orders and stuff. So from the beginning, I had parents who were extremely supportive. And that was amazing to have them kind of always go, you know, do what you feel is right. And that really helped. So they were a great support in, yeah. in terms of encouraging. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. 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 They've been amazing. Yeah. And Connor, would yeah, you... Yeah, in terms of kind of at the very beginning, uh, it really is such a simple idea that we were so afraid anyone would rob it on us. Uh, so uh, we were kind of tentative at the start, but then you kind of realize that the likes of Enterprise Ireland, um, especially out in IDT, the uh, Media Cube, there was yeah. uh, mentors there constantly on call, um, it, if anyone does have an idea. So we went out to Dominic Mullen, the Media Cube, and he literally straight away kind of shot us down and said, lads, this... <laughs> There's a lot more you have to do before you can even start about starting this kind of business. So yeah. he got, kind of gave us direction and a kick in the arse. So after that, um, we kind of had more direction. And then yeah. from there on in, it was pretty, it wasn't smooth sailing, but it was definitely no, but a again, lot And more people helpful. supportive all the time. People yeah, exactly, trying to help yeah. you and yeah. 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 And, and even found... in college especially, yeah. Uh, the amount of support there for student uh, entrepreneurs in the sense of societies, whether yeah. it's uh, ESOC or uh, stuff like societies like an Actus, they, uh, they're brilliant for promoting entrepreneurship in students, so it's yeah. definitely something everyone should at least give a go. It's great to hear, isn't it? Yeah. It's great to see that support yeah. being there. I don't know, you, you, you've, you've been to, Ch you manufacture in China now, right? And you've raised lots of money for your business as well, right? So were you fearful of those experiences before going into them? Or what, how did you get to China? How did you find that? Uh, it was petrifying. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, even just getting on the plane was a struggle that day. But. I think if you're going to do something like that, and when we started out the business, we were 18, we had a notion what we were doing. And we're from Sligo. We initially started to work with our local enterprise office there, who were brilliant. And, but we, what we found over the years is that if you ask anyone to have a cup of tea, they definitely will, or coffee or anything. And people are really, really giving with their time. Everyone's so lovely, especially here in Ireland. There's just a fantastic community of people, and you never know what you're going to learn from them. So when we went out to China, um, I hadn't noticed what we were doing, but the only way to set up manufacturing is to just go there. You can't do it remotely. You just have to dive in. And mm. some days you'll get loads done, some days you'll get nothing done, but it's an experience and you're learning every single day. And it took us probably a little bit longer than most to set it up, but... And do you we think there's a, a personal characteristic or trait that you have, say, that, that you know, <laughs> and you can be as cruel on yourself as you like here, right? <laughs> so that, that, like, that allows you to do that, like? Um, Naively ambitious, okay. potentially. Uh, we've no idea what you're walking into. I think every single day as a young entrepreneur, uh, especially if you haven't got experience in the industry or something, but if you know yeah. that you have a great product and you know how to sell it, uh, 
you'll definitely get it made and you'll get it sold and you'll get it out there. So, so persistence and just resilient, dogged determination. You guys see that as well? Yeah. 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 You, if, you was, if somebody was describing you, how would you think they might describe you? I don't know, I definitely think that you have to be kind of crazy to, crazy. Do, <laughs> to do what we're doing. Um, but it's definitely, and I'd encourage anyone, and to do with the support as well, like if anyone is thinking of something, has an idea, the community that's there is unbelievable. And I know that you could definitely reach out to any of us and be more than happy to help. And I just think mm. it's all about like taking the first step is definitely the hardest thing. But then once you take it, you know, the benefits that come from it, whether things are going to work out or not in the future, is amazing and I definitely yeah. highly recommend you know going out and giving it a shot yeah yeah and Connor you feel the same yeah no on top of that like it's um you're gonna get kicked down a lot uh you could have the best idea in the world and there'll still be people who'll pick holes in it so mm. um it really is it's resilience again that's that's pretty much one of the main words for it but, what have you got uh, to lose exactly yeah we have pretty very few obligations as students and somebody describing you what would they say about you <laughs> he doesn't want to say. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know what she thought. No. <laughs> okay. But, but uh, well, you have to be determined ultimately, yeah, right? You, you've you've got to be it, persistent yeah. with this and, Very and, and sticking with it. And then, and then the, is there any sense about the fact that you haven't worked for you know, a long time or for some time, say, in a more conventional job? Did that in any way become a disadvantage for you, do you think? I definitely think it's a disadvantage, but if you're trying to build what you're trying to build, you're going to go out there and you're going to find out how to do something. And there are amazing people like yourself who are available and who've done it before. And when you're building a business, usually no one has ever done it before, what you're trying to do. So in one way, the best person to learn off is yourself. And when you learn how to do something, you're going to do it so well. And as long as you take your time, you'll get there in the end anyway. So it's fine. Yeah. yeah. And then for so, going to the three, I think it's uh, for on that stage as well. Uh, it's something you're passionate about. So the three of us think it's pretty niche industry. So um, I meant to ask you your price point for your product, what you're selling. Did you want to mention what your people are charging for? Um, well, at the moment, we're just selling them on an individual basis, but it's free for customers. So um, right. it's just all B2B. Yeah. Um, and then down the line, we're going to be uh, actually early 2016. Uh, we're going to start manufacturing our own products. and. Um, it's all going to be done on recurring revenue, so basically Great. a monthly, monthly charge uh, to the businesses. Great. So it'll be pretty exciting to get into that. And if you weren't concerned about the lack of experience, obviously, either in, from working? Um, because I was kind of unsure about what I wanted to do, um, I felt like you know, I wanted to get as many skills as possible and really, right. I'm still all about educating myself and there's so many resources okay. online and there's a lot that you can learn yourself. So I just think right. you know, once you're willing to commit to it and educate yourself as well, you can yeah. do anything you want basically. Great, and in terms of giving these guys who are maybe at a decision point a final word of wisdom from you, what would you say to them? Just go for it. If we can do it, you can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, that's it, no, honestly, yeah. If you have any sort of an idea, 100%, at least do it, because, as I said already, um, it will go down your CV, whether it was a flop or not. Uh, you went for it, and it shows you a bit of character, so yeah. Yeah, and leave. Yeah, I definitely think it's better to, you know, fail at something than you love do, that you love doing than to fail at something that you're miserable at. So it's definitely Great. better to love your job and enjoy yourself. Great. Well, look, I think there are three fantastic people, three people who have been really, you know, you, you've been inspirational in terms of what you've done and what you're doing. And congratulations to the three of you for your successes thus far. And certainly wish you all the best on, on your subsequent journeys as well. Thank so you. congratulations and thanks very much to the three guys. Thank you. Yeah.